Nature publishes a second paper on an ancient Greek mystery, the Antikythera mechanism. This promises to revolutionize our understanding of the history of technology and astronomy, and it even tells us about the timetable for the earliest Olympic Games. The Antikythera mechanism would be remarkable even if it was a less clever thing than it is, because there is so little like it physically preserved or even described in ancient books. If it hadn't been discovered when it was in 1901, no one would possibly believe that it could exist because it's so sophisticated. It is, in a sense, you could describe it as being the technological side of the Greek miracle that created so much of our Western civilization. A friend of mine, uh, Mike Edmonds, came to me one day. Uh, he's a professor of astronomy at Cardiff University. And he said, have you ever heard of the Antikythera mechanism? Um, well, I said, no, I hadn't. You know, what is it? And he told me this extraordinary story. In 1900, just off the coast of the small island of Antikythera, a group of sponge divers came across the remains of an ancient wreck. The first diver to come to the surface said he'd found a heap of dead, naked people underwater. The second diver came up with a larger-than-life bronze arm. And what they'd in fact discovered was the wreck of a Roman merchant vessel stuffed full of Greek treasure. And all this treasure was taken to the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, including a small lump just over 30 centimetres high, completely disregarded at the time. It lay in the museum for some months, according to accounts, and then it split apart. And when it split apart, a curator noticed the remnants of some small precision gear wheels. After the first half century of research, which led to some insights, but generally a lot of confusion, a British physicist in the mid-1950s started to study the mechanism. He was called Derek de Sola Price. Price was the first to study X-rays of some of the fragments made by Carolambus Caracalos. From these X-rays, Price developed a model of how the mechanism worked. It incorporated one feature, an ancient cycle of the sun and moon called the Metonic cycle, which was absolutely critical to later understanding. It's one of the basic keys for understanding how the mechanism works. He also identified in the mechanism some epicyclic gearing, that is to say gears that move with their axes moving on other gears, a completely astonishing revelation for ancient Greece. Now the very latest techniques have been used to explore the mystery device. In the autumn of 2005, a team from Hewlett-Packard, led by Tom Maltzbender, came with a, a special mechanism for looking at the surfaces of all the fragments. With our method, we photograph uh, a surface like this stone surface here with a fixed camera, but light sources at multiple positions. And from this, we can certainly interactively change lighting conditions of the object on the computer to bring out more detail. But more importantly, what we can do is we can change the reflectance properties, the, the material, basically, of the object itself. We can now transform into a very metallic look. This is beautiful. Very good. We wanted 3D X-ray information at high resolution also. And a world-leading company called X-Tech Systems came with a team led by Roger Hadland. They bought an eight-ton X-ray machine to Athens, so they produced brilliant data. We have absolutely extraordinary high-resolution data of all 82 fragments of the mechanism. And this has been really the basis of many of our revelations. The Antikythera mechanism was the ancestor of a whole range of medieval instruments and clocks. Don Unwin, a master instrument maker, has already made replicas of many devices, including the 14th century Wallingford clock. His latest ambition is to make a working version of the Antikythera machine. But all the gears, they're all squashed in and into quite a narrow, you know, like your yes. Richard of Wallingford's clock. He left plenty of space between yes, them, yes. but in this... Well, I, I, yeah. I was surprised how little space how it little actually looked, yeah. took up. Once, once you get to the main body of it, you'll see the gears coming yes, up in yes. slices, because 
you know, we took an eight-ton X-ray machine to Athens to X-ray this tiny really? little thing, you know. <laughs> and we did it in 3D so we could get the three-dimensional information out of the oh, object. Oh, this is coming. Know? And you're just beginning to see now the crown. The this was, this was ex you see a the terrific advance. Was it not? From, from some of your earlier work. Oh, that's lovely. You, see, you can see the gears and layers. You can yeah. see exactly where they are and their relationship yeah. in three dimensions, which is what Price didn't have, of course. Of course, he no, no. He no, couldn't no. see the three dimensional arrangement of the gears. That's the gear Price identified as 127 mm. teeth, yes. you know, for the Newtonic side. This is 223 teeth yes, for the Saras side. Of it, yeah. And so on. And that, those are the gears. That's the little pin and slot that uh, oh, Michael yes. Wright identified. Yeah. But let, let me show you oh, some, good. this is a computer animation of the gears. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? It's a beautiful thing, isn't yes. it? <laughs> it goes around very quickly, obviously, because otherwise you... Oh, it's, you've, it's, got, you've got the moon work on the, there. Yes, that's, that's a little moon phase indicator that uh, Michael Wright uh, identified. Beautiful device. And here we've got it on the Wallingford clock. Very similar. Very similar, but over 1,400 years later. In fact, you can see it. If you look at the back of fragment C, that's the little ball there. Yes. People had seen this for 100 years, yes. and it took Michael Wright just, to, to resolve it. it. Yeah. He said, that's what it is. And yes. it's the sort of thing <laughs> you think, yes, of course it is. You know? <laughs> the latest paper in Nature there's four of us as authors. There's myself, Yanis Bitsakis. He's been responsible for deciphering the inscriptions on the mechanism, and he has made a major contribution. John Steele, expert on ancient astronomy, and Alexander Jones, very distinguished historian of ancient astronomy. I heard of the research and I was invited to the conference in Athens where the new results were presented publicly. And they were quite dazzling, really. Uh, not only was there a clear consensus of how the gear work in the mechanism worked for the first time, but also there was the new evidence of a lot of new text inscribed on the surfaces inside fragments, on the outside surfaces of fragments. We knew there was text, but much more was being read and it was clear that there was going to be much more work to be done there. This was very exciting. The process by which we read the month names on the Metonic dial was very much a back and forth between Tony Freeth and myself. He would send me by email uh, images that were made by his tomography software. And these would be like very, very thin slices made through a fragment of the mechanism. And we had a really exciting exchange of emails where, where I was giving him new information about bits of text I'd read and he was doing the reverse. And I, being completely ignorant of ancient Greek astronomy, couldn't interpret this, but Alex was the ideal person to actually interpret and understand what we were reading. The names of the months on the mechanism are very valuable for us because they identify possible places where the mechanism might have been manufactured, possibly where the mechanism was meant to be used, possibly both. We can't be sure. Now this is a great surprise for us. All expectations were that the mechanism would have come from some place in the eastern Mediterranean, perhaps the island of Rhodes. That has been the most popular candidate. What we found was that the calendar is characteristic of places that are always in the western part of Greece, up in the northwest of Greece, or the island of Sicily. One of the possible places that had the same calendar that the mechanism had on the Metonic dial was Syracuse. Syracuse was a great city of the Greek world. It was also the hometown of one of the greatest of ancient mathematicians and scientists, Archimedes. There is a quote from Cicero in the classical literature which describes a mechanism that was made by Archimedes that sounds very similar to the Antikythera mechanism. So it's very tempting for us to link the mechanism with Archimedes. But Archimedes was killed at the siege of Syracuse in 212 BC. We think the earliest this mechanism could be is 140 BC. So we don't think Archimedes made the mechanism. But there is a possibility, if it came from Syracuse, that it was made as part of a workshop tradition that goes back to the great old man. 
Another thing we discovered was that the machine is an eclipse prediction machine. It has a dial which follows this ancient eclipse prediction cycle called the Saros cycle. If you have an eclipse in one month and you look 223 months later, you will get a very similar eclipse, whether it's of the sun or the moon. And this repeat goes on for 12 or 15 centuries. It's a remarkable cycle. Let me just show you this one. This is sort of from inside, and I'm going round through and out yeah. to show the Saros dial. This is the Saros eclipse prediction yeah. dial here. You see, and you have to reset it, obviously. This little dial here, which is we call the Exoligmos dial, goes around once every just over 54 years. It's a triple Saros, so every time you go round this dial, you go round one of these sectors. Uh -huh. The numbers in these sectors tell us how much time to add to the eclipse time in the glyph when we go round this dial for a second time for Eta and a third time for <laughs> Yota Digamma. It's a little uh, hour adjustment. Yeah, yeah. So we now know what the function of this little dial is oh, as well. Yeah. Lovely. It's beautiful, isn't it? Another small dial stars in the latest Nature paper. The Olympiad dial was a very exciting part of our work. The dial you can see in this slice, it's the circular ring with two cross diameters. But this slice is a bit too high up to show you very much writing on it. Now, Tony was sending me slices that were running down from here. We see details that don't show up in the first slice. You can see some lettering is showing up here. This is the alpha, like in modern A. Now I'm showing the lettering inside the pi slices that show the cycle of year numbers. So in every year of the cycle, there would be one or two of these international games held, and the mechanism is showing for the current year, which are the games to expect. A four-year cycle is a bit of a surprise on the mechanism because it doesn't really have an astronomical function. It has a cultural function. It was the timing for the games that the Greek cities organized in major cult centers at four-year or two-year intervals, like the Olympic Games, which are not events of any scientific significance, but they're events that were of enormous social significance in the Greek world. And now Don Unwin must put all this together and actually make his replica Antikythera work. But his most famous instrument, the 14th century Dondi clock, this is the dial of the sun. shows just what he can do. I'm astonished by this, you know, if you think 14th century, I just... You know, and it's yes. the full Ptolemaic system for the planets, isn't it? Yes, it, you know. yes. You see, when I see this, I see the development of the Antikythera technology. You do, it's, don't it's you? It's all there at its birth in the Antikythera That's mechanism. Right, yeah. And then you see this extraordinary evolution into That's the right. Ptolemaic system. Yeah. What we have now is a mechanism which is, as Price said, a mechanical calculating machine. It calculates cycles of the solar system and it does it in a beautiful and brilliant way. Price's model was a complicated model doing simple things. We have a complicated model doing complicated and extremely sophisticated things in a design which is pure genius. It is fully at the top level of what we know that ancient Greek science could do and ancient mechanical technology could do. I sit for days looking at these x-rays and I find these tiny little clues about how it works and what it did, and I'm still astonished by it.